The placebo effect has been known for hundreds of years, but only now we are beginning to understand how it works. The first scientific work involving a placebo was in 1799 when Dr. John Haygarth tested a medical device known as Perkins Tractors. This was a quack treatment where metal rods were pressed on the patient's skin to draw out disease by means of magic. Haygarth trialled this against a similar treatment with non-magical wooden rods and found that patients responded just as well to this dummy treatment. Rather than seeing the patients as frauds, he understood that offering hope to them was beneficial in of itself. Haygarth attributed the success of placebo treatment to the imagination. Our modern understanding of placebo has hardly changed until recently. These days, the main use of placebos is as a control in clinical trials. Until recently, we never really focused on the mechanisms of this phenomenon or how we could manipulate it. Recent research has begun to unravel the mystery. In the late 70s, dentists experimented on a group of patients who were having a tooth removed. They wanted to test whether the placebo's effect on pain relief were caused by the body's endorphin system, which is its natural opiate system. The patients were given typical painkillers during their surgery. But a few hours later, as the treatment was wearing off, the dentist gave the patients another dose. Half were given a placebo, and the others were given naloxone. You may have heard of naloxone. It is most commonly used to revive people under an opiate overdose by bonding the same chemical sites in the body, nullifying their effects. The idea was that in both groups, the original dose would have worn off, but in the naloxone group, the body's natural endorphin system would be blocked off. If the mechanism of the placebo effect used this pathway, the naloxone group would feel worse than those that were given the placebo. The results proved the hypothesis to be true and showed the researchers that the placebo effect was due to the body's endorphin system. So now we have the mechanism of action, but there's more to the placebo than that. Let's take a look at the psychological aspect. Why does the body release endorphins to begin with? Across different studies, the relief from placebo has varied in its effectiveness. Psychologists have long theorized that classical conditioning plays a role here. Classical conditioning was most famously used by Pavlov. He noticed that the dogs he was experimenting on would unconsciously salivate when their handler was present because they knew he fed them. Pavlov then tried to tie their automatic salivary response to the sound of a bell. To do this, he rang a bell continuously when the animals were being fed. Then, after a few days of this, he rang the bell without any food present. Lo and behold, the dogs responded to the noise by salivating. This may seem benign, but the same effects have been proven in humans. Researchers performed a study to see if they could reduce their patients' dependency on their prescriptions. The subjects were given a drink with a distinct taste alongside a drug that suppressed the immune system. Subjects gave saliva samples before and after treatment each day. As expected, there was a marked difference in immune activity before and after. However, after the third day of the experiment, the subjects were given their distinct tasting drink alongside a placebo pill. Amazingly, the patients showed the same drop in immune activity after being given the placebo. The process was repeated and the response continued for a few more days although by the third day, the effect had begun tapering off. Nonetheless, the principle was proven. Conditioned responses, in this case, to the distinct taste of the drink, caused the body to react just as if it had been given a powerful drug. There's even more weird stuff to the conditioning aspect of placebo that we still don't fully understand. The effectiveness of placebo treatments have been increasing year after year. This is believed to be due to an increased general trust in medicine amongst the general public resulting in a conditioning which boosts our expectations even further. This is backed up by the fact that placebo injections have a greater effect than placebo pills, and sham surgeries are more effective yet. This was tested on patients awaiting knee surgery, who were anaesthetized, cut open and sewn back up, without the doctor actually fixing anything. When the patients rated their pain relief post-treatment, the sham surgery was equally as effective as the real thing. Perhaps the most perplexing placebo study to date showing the power of conditioning was in IBS patients. Participants who hadn't responded to existing treatment were lured into trial a new drug. One group were told that they would receive no treatment. The second group were actually told by the doctor that the new drug they were to take was nothing more than a placebo, literally just a sugar pill, but adding that placebos were a powerful treatment for IBS. Astonishingly, after three weeks of treatment, the placebo group were reporting significantly lower pain and better quality of life than the no-treatment group, than the no-treatment group, despite just receiving a sugar pill. 
After concluding the study, one subject even asked the doctor for more pills, because after stopping the treatment, her symptoms returned. So there we have it. To summarize, the placebo effect seems to be primarily caused by the body's endorphin system and the process of classical conditioning. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to us for more.